but there it is. Um, so, <laughs> I'm Kate. I'm Audie. I'm Zach. I'm Jacob. I'm Mark. And we have a saying that we usually do when we, uh, normally it's we are the Knights of the Drunk Watch and now our watch begins for all of you Game of Thrones fans. Uh, but today we're going to do and now our talk begins. So you can raise your imaginary cups of water or whatever. We are the Knights of the Drunk Watch and, and now, now our, our talk, talk begins. begins. Is that your teeth on the table? <laughs> Okay, I had to take out my dentures. That's bad form. <laughs> it's stranger. There we go. Okay, um, so just to start, a couple of facts about the show. Audie, do you want to start with that? Yeah, uh, so um, assuming everybody's here for the Stranger Things panel, um, I will tell you this isn't one of those panels where we talk at you. We would love to hear opinions, thoughts, ideas, things you'd like to discuss. If you'd want to join in, you can just raise your hand, and we will get to everybody. So. Don't worry if we like pass you up, we will get back to you. Um, so first, I'm sure everybody knows the show is created by the Duffer Brothers. Um, For now. Oh uh, yeah, we just I'm found sure out some- Well, season three is guaranteed. They've already, that's yeah. already happening. Well, as far as I know, they have already signed on to do season three. They are interested in doing season four, but like my notes say here, sad face, they're saying there will only be four seasons. No. Yeah, they said four only. Cancel my Netflix right now. <laughs> I'm done. I'm out, I'm goodbye. Out. And what's the point of even being in this panel now? But like, uh, but like, does anybody feel like they're really gonna be able to tell this story in four seasons? My personal rule is any uh, TV series or episodic show that exceeds five, they're just scrambling for ideas. Just look at Supernatural. Yeah, Supernatural, yes, but Game of Thrones, no. So. Uh, Game of Thrones also had previous source material, though. For, so. Fair enough. Fair Who enough. likes Game of Thrones anyway? Okay, well. We're running a Game of Thrones panels tonight, by the way, everyone. Um, so created by the Duffer Brothers, uh, as many of you probably know, they first wanted to sign on to direct It, the new iteration of Stephen King's It. They were turned down for that. And so they threw down their hats <laughs> and the gauntlet and decided to make Stranger Things, which is basically It in a different way. So um, of course we all know that the world is heavily influenced by Stephen King and of course by the 80s movies. We're actually gonna watch here a little video in a minute about um, kind of what I found is a shot for shot uh, breakdown of original 80s movies and Stranger Things. And that's kind of what we're discussing today. We're gonna look at how each character fits into an 80s movie archetype and then using what we know about those archetypes, we're gonna make predictions about what's coming because that's really what everybody wants to know is predictions. So let's see if we can get that video going. It's like a Stephen King time Pray show. Pray y'all, we do drink for technical difficulties. So oh, nope, yeah. not that. Nope, nope. Too far, too, too far. far. Oh, too much. That should be it. It should play on its own, perhaps. I'm drinking for technical yeah. difficulties. I'm bringing, oh, I'm bringing, I'm bringing mm -hmm. now. I'm gonna preemptive drink. We lost somebody. It's time. thinking. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, up, up, we're close. We see what it's going for. Close. Can I click it? And I clicked it once. Click it. Let me click it again. Just give it a second. It's got to I'm be some frantic clicks. <laughs> so he, who here grew up in the '80s? Raise your hand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So awesome you should definitely too. recognize some of this stuff for Pick you younger kids. It will. Uh, is the just, internet not just, working? Let's just skip I say we just it. Skip, skip it. Oh, that makes me sad. It was good. Really it was good a good video, video guys. It was real good. <laughs> it was real good. Yeah, no, we'll act it frame by frame. Just trust nope. us. It was a good video. <laughs> it doesn't work. Best video. Not the best video. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yes, sir. Oh yeah. Good call. Good, good call. call. I'm gonna drink to that call. Okay. Spoilers for anyone who has not watched. Both seasons of Stranger yes, Things. Yes, there are definitely spoilers up until the end of Stranger Things 2, so Spoil be everything. prepared. Has anybody played the exactly. video game, the mobile game? We will also be awesome. spoiling yeah, the we'll mobile game. Spoilers <laughs> 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 of that. Nah, really, there's only like a couple well, things they're in out. it. They just saw season one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then we're gonna go to our first character because he's really the first person that we really focus on in the show in the first episode is Will Byers, and we are gonna be looking more at each character and their development and basing predictions off of that. So um, these are some of the 80s characters that I found that remind me of Will Byers. The kind of 
strange child archetype, not necessarily with superpowers, even though Damien does have superpowers. Will Byers is haunted. Like, can we just get Will Byers a break? Like, first season, he's kidnapped and slugs down his throat and all mostly that. Mostly killed. Mostly. He mostly I, was dead. Mostly dead. When mostly she pulled dead. that thing out of his mouth, I mean, uh, it That's just... how you get a break, just a sweet release of death. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's how it comes out. Eternal sleep. It would have been a real yeah. short season. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole first season, he, he has to deal with that. And then in the second season, we're back at it. He's once again the focus of whatever evil monster is coming that way. So I think a lot of that has to, we have to wonder, like, why Will? What is so special about Will? Why didn't Will get eaten in the Upside Down when he was first taken? Barb got eaten. Um, anybody else who was taken was eaten. No. But, oh, very nice. She's pretty dead. <laughs> oh, oh. Justice for Barb. Nah. Oh, and justice for Benny, too. Everybody forgets about poor Benny. Yeah, Benny's or, a badass. Benny is yeah, totally deserved. Poor Benny. He didn't deserve to die like that. Um, so what else do I have So why, here? The question was, why, why, why didn't Will why just Will? die? Yeah, does anybody have any theories or ideas about why Will did not get eaten? Yes. Mm, that's interesting. Bob's got to go. Two parents. Bro, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, he does have a dad, technically. His dad's just a dick. Lonnie. Yeah, no cussing. Um, oh, is that a rule? We, yeah. we got kids in oh, here. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes, sir. I have a uh, feeling that they're going to bring Lonnie back to, to die horribly. I really hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I hate Lonnie. Yes, sir. So you think he's the, he's like a double agent. Ooh, well, that's mentioned in season two. Mm -hmm. And he does seem to have some kind of proficiency, we'll be right there, that he seems to have some kind of proficiency for taking on the supernatural, surviving it, but also being a medium for it. So yes, in the back, and then I'll get right to you, Elf. He's a harbinger. He's a harbinger. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? So much like Carol Ann or uh, Linda Blair, whatever. What was Linda Blair's name in? I'm sorry. Reagan. Reagan. Okay. Reagan. Um, okay. So much like Reagan and Carol Ann, and even Damien as well. Damien is all. They're all vessels for um, for evil this things. evil thing. So you think that the mind flayer always meant to come into this world? That was always his purpose. We're gonna discuss like the purpose of the demi gorgons and the mind flayers a little bit later. But I do like that idea. Yes, Al. Mm -hmm. So much like these characters, like his innocence is making him open to this kind of possession and this kind of, of taking over. Yes, sir. No, you, sir. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. That's a very interesting way to think about it. Yes. So something about him makes him vulnerable to this more than just the innocence, something in his history. Um, oh, uh, yes. yes, sir. I think right. because Will was such a, a runt, he has more of a mental, emotional capacity to accept like new and new things. 
So he's not strong, strong strange. enough. Stranger things, but that's the <laughs> uh But I think he also has an imagination that allows him to see things kind of at face value uh -huh. and not make pragmatic judgments on what those things are. Like, he doesn't... It's he not, just accepts it. Right, it's like, not black and white. It's all like, mm -hmm. it's a spectrum for him. Yeah. And he okay. kind of accepts it. I think that's why maybe that latches on to him more mm -hmm. than say like the adults, because they adults are very black and white, pragmatic. This is bad, kill it. Right. Whereas Will's like, oh, let it live. Maybe uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's the curiosity. Yeah, it's a curiosity. It's like, a lot of this also goes back to like H.P. Lovecraft. So in season two, it's pretty much Nyarlathotep. Um, so it's in H.P. Lovecraft and all of that mythos. It's always curiosity that draws people into the otherworldly things that happen. It's like, oh, I found this weird, creepy book. Let me translate it and see what happens. And then bad stuff happens. So I think it's that curiosity that he still has that kind of, besides he's their mage. Perfect. So, yeah. so actually looking at these characters and knowing we have like 20 exorcists and 20 poltergeists and like 100 Damians, um, we, so technically we ended season two with the Mind Flayer being banished from Will. He's no longer coughing up slugs. He's no longer slipping in and out of the upside down. Do we feel like, who here by show of hands feels like Will is free of the upside down? <laughs> One person. <laughs> One. Or do you hope he's free? I, I think that considering uh, that the, the uh, scary monster of the past season went head to head with Eleven, that the, the, the bad guy would be targeted in the joint. So you you think Ooh. that he's going after Eleven. And I would agree with that, but I don't know if necessarily that means that he's going to release Will as his vessel or as his you know yeah. way of getting into it. So I would personally, from a character standpoint, would like to see Will develop as more than just the victim of the series. Upon. Because up until now, yeah. he's been the guy everybody's got to save, and that's mm. kind of been driving the plot. And I'm ready for him to to take a step up from that. Some, be a villain. Yeah, maybe be a villain. That would be great. Be like awesome. if we could I'm see, ready for him to cast that fireball. Right, if we could Ooh. see some kind of, you know, 11 versus... Well, and that, this was the other thing that we were talking about, is the relationship that he and 11 are going to have going forward. Because they've both like touched the upside down. They I think it's both, tragic though. They're both like weirdos. They both have this capacity yeah. for dealing with the supernatural. Why do you think I, it's tragic? I, I, for them to both like be together and harmoniously is just too. I, it's I too, think it would be it's great for. Neat. I think it would be well. I mean, they're not like together, together. But I, I would like. We'll get right to you, sir. I would like to to see their relationship grow. There's she's only ever been in a scene with him. Like, I think like two or three scenes and he was unconscious all of the time. And I want to see them discuss these these otherworldly things mm, that they're experiencing okay. on a much deeper level than anybody else still alive has. And I think that's going to be real interesting to see explored in the next season. Yes, sir. He was very exorcist. Yeah. At the time. But mm -hmm. I kind of remember that they're going to put him a little more in the past in the third season. And he fell a little more forward. Which yeah. Which kind of lean that way with the whole different people with the numbers. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. No, yeah, that's what we're here for. It's rumors. very possible. Okay, so we've discussed Will. Let's move on to the next guy. You did not find Jonathan Byers. Oops, sorry. Okay, so there was supposed to be a picture of Jonathan Byers, but we're gonna drink for technical <laughs> difficulties. That's fine. Or just Zach, not just me, just, just being Zach. Okay, Space so I again. have literally like one question about Jonathan Byers. Are we over him yet? Like, no. what is Jonathan Byers doing? I got a couple of, like, adamant head straightens <laughs> Somebody so. tell me what he's doing. Somebody, please. I honestly think, because of the real world stuff that happens, is that if they're going to mention him, he's, they're going to pull one of those tricks where he's okay. around. A body double that looks like him is going to be around for five minutes. Okay. Whoa. Oh, no. That's a problem. Uh, the charger is downstairs. Can somebody run downstairs? Oh, what charger? For my phone. I mean, for my laptop. laptop okay, so uh. I'm having some very serious issues with Jonathan Byers because it, he's always reacting. He never does anything proactive. He is literally there to be a sidekick to Nancy. 
Nancy is the driving force in that well, duo. Well, he's the muscle of Nancy. But he's not. She shoots better than him. She thinks mm -hmm. better than him. She swing a bat. She, she could swing a bat. Like, he's just, yes? He's kind of the transition phase. He's, he's sort of like our basically. Right. Okay. Otherwise, you got <laughs> Steve. Hey, don't Steve. hate on Steve. We're going to have a love fest Mama for Steve, Steve soon. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. yeah. Right, because Steve, like, and I, a lot of it has to do with Joe Keeley, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, about Joe Keeley's personality, who plays Steve. But I just feel like right now, Jonathan is a bit of a stick in the mud, and his whole purpose has either been, like, helping Nancy or trying, I guess, to find Will. So I just, I feel like I'm not getting enough there, and I'm not, like, ready to write him off, but I need, I need more from Jonathan Byers. With me, I, it felt like the, the Byers brothers were, were kind of away for the jumpers to kind of flip that stereotype of the, the 80s damsel that keeps saving them. Um, oh. if, if someone was to look at it that way, um, Jonathan was almost Kate Camp trying to pull a film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was. He's definitely getting rescued by Nancy left and right. She's definitely doing the stuff. So, anybody have anything great or loving they I want think, to I say about good. Jonathan Byers? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I think it's convenient as a literary tool to manifest the love triangle. But it's a little obvious, don't you feel? It's obvious, but they could not develop a Steve character without separating Steve and Nancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Steve, Steve was able to become stronger. Nancy was already strong. And they needed the third, the third wheel, so to speak, that simply drew her gaze. Yeah, oh, no. that's fair, and I'm I'm hoping I'm it. hoping soon that he's going to um, to move on. Okay, so we are having technical difficulties. We're gonna drink for that. It was a ten percent, so it just was like, and no, though. Um, so as far as I remember, my next slide, which we will get to soon, Joyce. is Joyce Byers. Um, and oh, so we got some seats here for anybody who wants to sit in. Um, <laughs> So uh, a lot, the two uh, other photos that I had up there for Joyce Byers was the mom from E.T. and the mom from Poltergeist. Uh, to me, Joyce Byers started out as your quintessential, like, 80s, kids are in trouble mom. Like, she's, you know, and, and she is such a, forgive my language, badass in the first season and in the second season. Like, it's, a, so? it's an unbelievably you triumphant so? return for Winona Ryder. She just seems... What are you talking about? She feels she's a lot bonkers. wackadoodle, okay? Yeah. She's not. It feels like she's just swinging a bat and just like doing no the No way! <laughs> In the first season, she's the only one who believes Will is still alive. Because but, she's, she's a right. wackadoodle. And but the, she's right! But the way she goes about it is so just very like, we gotta do like, oh alive. my god, it's like, just like take yeah. you chill yeah, yeah. and oh, use your But word. do you not know the moms in 80s movies? They had no chill. But listen. She, Moms, would you, you chill want, if you your kid was like... You want to put Ellen Ripley like, up there? You don't want to put Ripley up there? I feel like she's on her way to being Sarah Connor and Ripley. Like, yeah. I'm absolutely with you on that. <laughs> may, 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 maybe, absolutely maybe what it is, Winona Ryder is a wackadoo. <laughs> I think it's a triumphant so return for, for Winona Ryder. It's seeping through right the character. Uh, yes, yeah, right here. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir, and then we'll get to you, Elle. Feel like I feel like Nancy subverts that. I feel like the presence of Nancy in this show and Elle, they subvert that ideology. Like you, she. I mean, she's got Bob. She had Bob. Um, Saving power. I uh, I do have to say, uh, and we'll have a rest in peace Bob moment. But um, spoiler alert. I have to say, I am in some way ready for her in the next season. First of all, who's shipping Joyce and Hopper? Anybody so shipping no. the Joyce oh, Hopper train? No. Yes. Literally yes, anyone so in hard. Hopper. No. <laughs> anyone in Hopper. Okay. Um, anyone in Hopper. 
So I have to say, no. I'm ready for her. Who's excited for him as Hellboy? Because I totally. I'm know. really excited to see him as Hellboy. I, I want Ron Perlman to show up as Uncle Crazy Dad. <laughs> <laughs> that would so, be pretty awesome. I have to say that I think that that's it. the avenue for her to move out of just being this person who, which is very like I think it's great. I think she's a great character and I like it. But I do think that it's time for her character to start doing things on her own and for herself and maybe release a little bit of that whole. You know, I, I have to just character wise. I don't think I'm not saying she shouldn't take care of her I kids, her, but the plot should drive her in a new direction. Are we going to talk about Bob? Or is there a Bob section? Or There's not around? really a Bob section. Well, We're my, talking about it now. My question is why Bob? Why would Bob exist? I mean, at he first, was in the because he's at a goonie. Like, like basically, because okay. he's Sean Astin. Because he's Sean like, Astin, and he must be in the show. I, 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 at first, I don't know about everybody else, but the first half, I thought he was a double One agent. Oh. I thought he was like being sneaky and shady. A lot of us thought that. And that was fun until he's like, no, I'm just a goofy fat guy. Like, (laughs) no! But think about what that goofy fat guy did. Like, he came out and he, exactly like Sam Wise, at the end he like did what he was supposed to, I will carry you. Yeah. I cried at the end, but I was like, but why Bob? Yes, L. what did you have? Yes? No. That's true, and she's being motherly towards L as well, which is going to work great when we have a Hopper Joyce relationship. She's too but that's happening. I, mean, I think the wackadoo. Oh, sorry, the wackadoo is like countered by her strength in just yeah. believing no so way. hard. That scene where she says to Hopper in the first season, like, "Are you kidding me? You stay, and I'll go. He's my kid." That was everything. Like that was the best. Yes. Thank you, Disney. When you don't understand that. When I was a kid, my first parents, I was like, okay, first thing, let's pretend our parents are dead. You think no fun making characters. No, I don't want to pretend that. I'm drinking to that morbidity. No, I reject that pretend. Ever. And we don't see her, hello. And she's not not believing her children. She right. believes well, them. And like the, and up, the other parents in the show are like, oh, God, we're, grilling, dad, we're grilling burgers. I'm in the shower. <laughs> I'm in the recliner. <laughs> okay, be back at dark. Like it's, yeah, you, you get like a family unit where every member is an individual, but they right. also are that unit. And yeah, so you get that's to see true. both okay. aspects. And I think so that's, that's nice. what's the great progression from these characters that we see on the right to her in a more modern age. I think that those characters were very one-dimensional. And I think she has many dimensions. That's they true. created a real woman and a like real an mother. Like an alternate dimension? No, drink for your fun game. Okay, moving on from Joyce Byers. We're at everybody's favorite, Steve Harrington. I don't like Steve. Get out! Like Get out Steve. now! This is a pro Steve Harrington place. Ass. Okay. So, first of all, show of hands, who thinks that Steve as a stepmom is like the Mama best Steve. thing ever? Did you guys watch that video Mom, on YouTube video. of Mom Steve? Oh my God. They. So, the Duffer brothers agreed this season that they hit absolutely cinematic gold with that, that dynamic between Steve and Dustin and Lucas and Mad Max. That was fun. Like, that was some of the best stuff this season. That was fun. So, they have said we can expect more of that next season, which means we know Steve's going to be going to college, probably means he's going to be going to college somewhere nearby. And I am just so ready for him. Like, I, I just, everything about him makes me excited. What, what excites you the most? Uh, his bat skills. <laughs> his better than Negan bat skills. Oh, oh. shots fired. <laughs> it's on the table. <laughs> what do you dislike? Why, why, why do you, well, how could you not like Steve? This is, this is my thing. I, <laughs> Is no, it I he has feel. Hair? No, I feel like as a as a watcher of, of TV, I, I just feel like they're pushing Steve on me a lot. I'm getting sold, Steve, and I'm just not ready to buy yet. I'm not interested. I just, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It's me. Okay, fine. It's definitely you. Um, uh, as we all know, like the gentleman said, Steve was originally written to be the b- human villain. And when I say the human villain cover young ears, he was going to do some very awful things to Nancy in the original script. 
Look it up. I'm not going to talk about it here. Um, but because of Joe Keeley's like personality and how warm and, and funny and wonderful he is, he completely took over that character and it became something entirely different. And I think we've we've created a beautiful character out of that. A strong at that moment when I he think chooses you love I think you're in love with I Steve. think that moment when he chose to come back and not run away and grow as a character and then he swung that bat around like a freaking badass, he changed. He changed the cinematic scope because I think it's very rare that you see a actor change a character completely from what the show does like from the, sh okay. the show producers wanted to create and i think he's only grown from then no i give him that i give him that like he's like young hopper he's just going around clocking things in the face yes he totally is <laughs> <laughs> you are getting a back noise from like half the i'm throwing right some now. shade this way i'm drinking shade yeah They do seem to be, at the same time as paying homage to the 80s, they do seem to be subverting the stereotypes. Like, right. what we can expect is not what actually happened. Right. So I do like that a lot. So you mean now that you're attached to him, we shouldn't expect him to be like Johnny Depp in Nightmare on Elm Street and get sucked into the bed with Geyser Blood? I will, oh, I'm going to quit watching the show if Steve dies. I'm out. What? I won't be here next year. I'm not going to be here next, at the Strange Next Fans. slide. Next slide. Oh, wait, hold on. Anybody else have anything awesome to say about Steve Harrington? No, just me? Just me? Okay. I'm, I'm just excited to see what he does. I'm ready for Hopper. That's so, I'm because we have taken away, obviously, Joe Keeley as the human villain, they had to very obviously bring back in a human villain. And they did that with Billy Hargrove. I love this actor. I mm -hmm. think he's fantastic. I think he definitely comes in with the stereotype of 80s asshole. Yeah. And... Um, I know that a lot of his look and who he is is based on Randall Flagg. Who knows who Randall Flagg is here? Yeah, a few Randall Flagg lovers. Did you guys know that he had that look, that that's what he was kind of based off of? I could see it. I just yeah, recently I found out. For the, uh, one second. For the majority of the room, Randall Flagg is a, it's, he's a villain with a huge arc in Stephen King's novels. He exists in many of his novels. Uh, he is the, one of the main bad guys in um, the Dark Tower series. He also started, I believe, in The Stand or Stand By Me. I don't remember which one. I was stand. Stand, in The Stand. Yeah, I do know that he is a wizard. He does have magical powers, which does have some interesting um, uh, huh. implications for Billy. I don't know how much of that Randall Flagg persona they're going to take over or how much they're going to bring in. You never know. We have yet to see nah. an evil Eleven. We have yet to see an evil we person with a bad guy. We did see eight. Or She's nine. not evil. Who's nine? I'm just saying that or there's going to be somebody who came yeah, out of there who was a bad guy. Just saying. Yeah. But I do like the fact that they brought in a little bit of humanity with him at the end. And Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's a, he is that necessary local evil that is, is um, that's what I'm looking for, face value evil. Mm -hmm. Like, it's pretty, he's bad. He's just right. he's bad. He's and the Henry Bowers. That was the other picture that I wanted to add. Yes, sir? Um, for, for Billy, I thought he was like everyone else in the show, kind of like gives like an impression of like a stereotype. I thought Billy was like two times evil at first, and I thought he was going to like reveal to be that like he's deeper into the plot or be nicer than his book episodes. But no, throughout the whole thing, he was just a really mean dude. I don't think we're going to do two Steves. You know what I mean? Like, this guy's for sure staying the bad guy. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, but Billy has two Yes, that's fair. And I... Oh, he's got that persona. Mm-hmm. Well, the same thing, they, uh, Stephen King does the same thing with Henry Bowers in It, 
because Henry Bowers is an abused child. He, he goes through a lot of things. He deals with his own abuse and his own demons. But ultimately, he is an evil guy. He does evil things. Yes, sir. I mean, like, do we really care? Like, what was the question? Whatever. If, if Billy's going to kill his dad. Bad. Like, I'm worried oh. about Billy killing Steve. That's what I'm worried about. And I think they introduced him in this season, and they created this dynamic with Steve. You and think I think we can. Of, really? No, I don't think they're going to get rid of Steve, but I think we can expect Billy to create some very serious Attempted problems murder. next season. Huh. Some very bad stuff that is less supernatural and more human. Yeah, he's very dark sided. So I, I think if anybody's going to do anything violent toward another person, mm -hmm. it would be Steve. Okay. I mean, obviously. Cool. Anybody ideas, thoughts, Billy Hargrove? Yes. When he opened, when he started flirting with Mike's mom, <laughs> uh, and, and Mike's parents were pretty much almost not into these remote kind of stuff. Do you think that one move made the, made made those parents kind of irredeemable and they're going to be monster food? <laughs> um, that's funny. Uh, I do feel like, like his mom, oh God, Mike's mom. You can talk to me, Mike. You can talk to me, Nancy. Um, that's all she does. Like, she's the exact opposite of Joyce Byers, who is mm -hmm. like fighting and like doing. She's just like, what? I'm not going to go downstairs and check on my kid for Kay. weeks while he keeps another child down there. Well, the dad's worse, though. The dad's just like, <laughs> what I do? Your mother, and I just <laughs> I'm just going to eat my food. They're, they are definitely like the stereotype of not good parents. Uh, if, if Mike loses his parents, that's going to be a whole new. Will you notice, though, if they're, if they're missing? Uh, you'll notice. Notice from Mike's think, point of view. Yeah. I think Mike. I think notice. Mike will notice. Oh, look at that, my girl's mom. Okay, bye, mom. <laughs> Gotta go on my bike ride. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a good idea. Like, yeah. I do think that because Billy's gonna be. If things go down in the real world, they're the first ones going. What's going on? What? We've had three seasons. <laughs> we, we've Where, been. They warned. have no idea yeah, that there are supernatural monsters. So I think that's going to be an interesting dynamic. Okay, let's keep going before we get too late. Okay, Mad Max. Uh, I'm going to let Jacob talk about Mad Max. That's well, why you're here, right? I talk about Mad Max, I yeah. guess, yeah. All right, well, I mean, I mean I'm just gonna, I was just going to bring in the stuff about the video yeah, game. Yeah. All right, so in, video the, game spoilers. in the mobile game, uh, it was written in conjunction with Season 2. So basically you download it before Season 2. It's like, hey, there's this update oh. that releases on the same day as Season 2. So the update was Mad Max. She got added in as a playable character. Mm -hmm. In the game, she has psychic powers. So that's what I was expecting going into watching the season was, just, oh, she's going to be one of the other numbers. And that didn't happen. Obviously, huh. 8 shows up, but she doesn't manifest anything. So I was kind of interesting. But they, did, they didn't really expound on the reason they moved and what happened. True. Like, they came from them. It was kind of a secret. Okay, yeah. That's what yeah. I sort of assumed was the reason that they moved. It's like, oh, there's government experience Maybe going on. Maybe she's a other fire places. starter. She shows up. Mm. So, and fire I mean, we know, starter. isn't, aren't their dad, wasn't he military? Yes. Oh. Yeah, he was. So potentially they could have ties there. They so could, we'll oh, and see Papa, if maybe right? they expand. Like, Els Papa, their father, like. Yeah. That would be really interesting, and it's possible maybe like she's either doesn't remember that she has these powers, or they're gonna manifest themselves in like a really stressful moment. Or she has yep. no control over them. Or she has. That's yeah, how they, Firestarter yeah, works. Yeah, everybody so, catches on fire. And then yeah, um, that's how the end season four. Well, I'm ready. I'm really excited for for the character of Mad Max. I think she's a great addition, and I'm excited to see where she goes as more than just like Lucas's girlfriend. Like I want. I want to see her develop as a character. I think she's definitely not just Lucas' girlfriend. Right. I mean, at the very least, she's like the champion of the arcade. She ho holds the record yeah. for Dig Dug. And she beat the crud out of her brother. The crud. Yeah, yeah that's true. That, that was, was awesome. <laughs> so, and I definitely think that dynamic is going to be really stressful. <laughs> like the Mad Max, Billy, their family. I think that's, that's a whole new... And a lot of the times when you add characters to a, an integral cast like this that's so connected, they seem sort of outside and they seem not as good or tacked on. But I think this family that they've added is... Very interesting. I think Billy will will end up being like one of those super irritating, like unavoidable, off-topic obstacles. It's just like, no, we can't, 
we can't deal with you right now. We're fighting like <laughs> demons, but you're still here being a jerk too. So we have to deal yeah. with you first. Demons like, and jerks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would prefer to see a more like uh, more humanized villain and, and a more a more human conflict. So anybody, Mad Max theories, ideas, rude remarks? Yes. Which again brings us back to Randall Flagg. Ooh. So, there's, uh, their step sibling. His father married her mother, I believe. So, but I don't know. If she's his. I don't think she's his daughter. But we also don't know anything about her real dad. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. In a stressful situation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, and she had like a whole shield of people in front of her. She didn't know what to expect in that moment with the demo dogs. Yes, sir. So the only thing is, because I thought that Billy was going to end up having powers too. Mm -hmm. Because that was kind of a theory I had. Maybe that was just one of the reasons. My only question about that is, he seriously was named Max, which is why I thought it was going to be Max. Because he knew he was in there, Brad, and he was expecting him to say this thing, I think. Mm -hmm. so he mentioned, you know why we had Billy. So yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wonder if it's not going to be him having the powers, but her, which seems more likely. Yeah. Well, at the same time, it could be like uh, Nebula and Gamora. One could just be better. So she could be the stronger one, even though she's younger. So he resents her for that. Oh. I definitely think we can see some possible powers coming out. Yes. Yes. I'm ready. Yeah. I, I definitely am ready for Mad Max to grow as a character. Okay, moving on. Uh, Dustin and Lucas, my favorite <laughs> duo. Um, <laughs> wait, can you go to my notes just so I can remember some yeah. of the things that I put on there? Uh, I think that Lucas and Dustin, especially Dustin, well, no, actually Lucas too, I think both of them really grew out of the shadow of Mike in season two. They're no longer just like his sidekicks. I think they have their own like diverging individual uh, storylines. And I like the idea of the two of them sort of being separate because they're such this unit and we've come to think of them mm -hmm. as like this unit. But now Lucas has a girlfriend, Dustin doesn't. <laughs> Dustin had his whole plot line with the with D'Artagnan. Like they they definitely diverge into two completely different and unique characters and I'm very excited to see where they go. Who's ready for Dustin to get a girlfriend? Yes. No. Yes. I need somebody to appreciate no. those pearls. No, I think <laughs> don't do pearls? don't do that. That's what he said. He said they I can't know. resist the pearls. Yeah, but out of context, it sounds weird. Uh, I, I you don't even have your teeth in. I, I feel like, but I feel like he is the more inquisitive one. Like he is. He, I think he's more accepting of the supernatural. He's like these things don't have right, to be he bad. He wants to know. Like he he is uh, he's thirsty for like the knowledge yeah. of what they he's are. The yeah. yeah, and if you give him a girlfriend, he's not gonna have time to like. Have a relationship. Unless and she is also that way, where they're like mm -hmm. study together and like, ooh, what is it? And we do okay. know that they are adding two new female characters oh, to really? the show. Uh, one of them, I don't remember her, the actress's name, but she's going to be the new lifeguard at the pool, <laughs> and she's supposed okay. to be because it's it there is a time jump the between the next season. The lifeguard. Oh man, right. I'm hoping for a, for a Sandlot throwback for that one. There that possibly be awesome. <laughs> there's a there's a one year time gap, so it's going to start the following summer. And okay. then um, they have added this lifeguard girl. And they've also added um, Maya Hawk, who is Ethan Hawk and Uma Thurman's daughter. She is also Joy. Some of you may have seen her in the PBS Little Women. She's been in that recently. Um, so they're adding two new younger female characters to the show. And I'm ready for one of them to notice the pearls. <laughs> Not the lifeguard. Yeah. <laughs> I love his burring noise. Yes. Oh. Oh, I didn't hear that. That's new information. There's a lot of rumors oh. about some of that. Yes. I think it really shows that perhaps they're not just mindless, like eating machines. I think that was the first indication with Dart. 
that they there could be some kind of relationship. And yeah, okay, like the only thing that Dark gave him was he did meet him. But <laughs> that's a that's real that's, important. That's, that's real cool. important to the plot. Yeah, I feel like that makes But I think a through difference. his research he will be able to figure those things out while everybody else is batting at things. He'll be mm-hmm. able to learn about what these these creatures are i feel like in a way dustin is the only one that's motivated we'll get right to you sir in the back i feel like dustin is the only one right now motivated to deal with the supernatural because mike's got his girl well, and lucas has his girl if you give him a girlfriend Will's everybody like, right Will's like, like one foot in the other whatever upside down yeah he but i think that dustin was the driving force this season because mike was depressed he was missing l he didn't want to do anything he didn't want to include anybody, but Dustin was like, no, we got to deal with this. And I think that he's ready to be that force. Okay. But that doesn't mean a girlfriend's going to take that away from I'm going to watch. I mean, he's but... the glue of the party. He's the one that, like, yes. in season one, he's like, we got to put this back. We got to fix this. It's like, you drew first blood. You have to apologize. Right. That vim, vim's the rules. He is, yeah. He's he's definitely the guy. Anybody, anything else about Dustin Lucas? Yes, sir. Sorry. Right. Um, it's a very good way to put it. We know that Hopper was in Vietnam. We know that it's strongly implied that Lucas' dad was in Vietnam. Right. Huh. Um, I think it would be um, interesting as this uh, show progresses uh, to uh, compare and contrast their experiences uh, there. That's interesting. I didn't even really consider that. But there is this sort of like military, like veterans, you know, giving your life. There, there's a lot of military inference and reference in the show. And I do like, I think with these characters, what they're showing is like military isn't always the bad guy. You know, like Hopper is still, you know, a, an authority figure that is armed, but he's not the bad guy. So you have like sort of a nice dichotomy. It's not just, oh, the government is bad because Hopper is still also the government. And, Lucas's dad was also the government. I am ready to see a little bit more about Lucas. I do know Lucas's sister is going to become a more central Pretty character. Good. She was the best last season. I loved her. So apparently everybody loved her, so they're going to definitely bring her to the forefront a little bit more. Okay, we're running out of time. Okay, so we're going to talk about Nancy Wheeler. Um, these are all of the female stereotypes that I found to compare Nancy Wheeler to, which is exactly who I thought she was going to be at the beginning of the series because she was very like worried about losing her v card or you know like talking to boys or her hair she did not seem to care about her friend very much like but and a lot of that i mean like the molly ringwald character or the teen witch character and even the Pootloos character they're all like pretty selfish they're all kind of focused on themselves and what they want to do and what what they want but I think she became a lot more like Elizabeth Shue in the Babysitter's Club. It, you mean Adventures sh- in Babysitting? I'm sorry, my bad. Ad- Adventures in Babysitting. I think that they that she has grown so much and I'm so excited because I really didn't like her in the first season. I mean, at the beginning of the first season. But by the second one, when they were facing those demo dogs and he was like, do you know how to handle a gun? And she said, yeah, I can. That was awesome. That's what I want to see out of a young female heroine yeah. in this type of show. What do you guys have on her? Yep. Anything? I mean, I think it's pretty. Uh, it's basically what I think they're trying to flip on the on its ear mm-hmm. is that she will become more than just a, a, a flailing female. You if know, she just ditched that rescuing. Jonathan. I like. I'm, I'm ready for Jonathan I'm to die. Shipping. Okay, fine. Maybe I'm going to debate, but I'm surprised you didn't notice. Yeah, actually, I've heard a lot about that, mostly because of the plan that she creates to trap uh, Freddy and the plan that Nancy creates to not only take down the the government, the Hawkins lab, but also the the plan that she creates to trap the Demogorgon. That's all her plan. Everything that she and Jonathan have been doing is coming right out of Nancy's brain. She took down Hawkins lab by herself, basically, because Jonathan did nothing but sit there. By herself, she took down all of Hawkins. She took down the government. Like, how? What? He drove. She's. Oh, yeah. He drove. He drove the car. <laughs> He's a getaway driver. Yes, sir. Um, 
I don't know that. Uh, one. Yeah, you do. Oh, yeah. Death by sex. Oh, death by sex. I'm so sorry. Yes, yes, you're right. Sorry for the younger yeah. kids. He, he's that the one who goes upstairs with the boy. Right. That if like you know you engage in certain acts, you're most likely going to die in an '80s movie. And I, you're right. Yeah. I mean, she's yeah, she's definitely a good. modern woman. She huh. like takes on. She she's in control of herself, and she still survives in spite of that act. So yes, you are correct about that. Uh, anything else about Nancy? Sorry, we're trying to get along so we can get to the important people. Okay. <laughs> wow. <Whoa. laughs> I'm ever my bad. <laughs> my bad. Okay, so uh, again, somebody didn't find a photo to add here because I forgot to tell you. Uh, of what? course, I was going to add Elliot to this picture because uh, he is, I mean, just Mike Wheeler is Elliot from E.T. There <sighs> is no better comparison. Older brother from so would that make L the gremlin? <laughs> well, Gizmo, 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 not the gremlin, she would be Gizmo. Gizmo is a mogwai. Oh my god. Okay, you take it from here, Jacob. <laughs> I mean, I'm a big Mike Wheeler fan. No, Mike I, Wheeler I, is the heart of the show. Yeah, I'm what? with him. Get out. We're gonna, we're gonna keep losing people if you keep saying stuff I'm, like that. <laughs> you keep spouting off. Oh, so many people have walked out. I mean, he spent the whole season going. I lost my friend. But doesn't that mean I lost something? My like, girlfriend. I'm sick of it's these like, movies. Like, what? It, oh yeah, we were talking about Walking Dead earlier. Everybody got all over all those deaths awful quick. Like, he is a child. He is a small child that is dealing with things that he cannot understand. He's right. never lost but anybody. Also, I'm an adult and I have 12 episodes to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I pay fourteen dollars for Netflix, <laughs> and I want—I mean, come on! But don't you want a good character well, development? Mean, I love his relationship with Hopper growing. Yes. Even as a like an adult, can you really understand cosmic entity like level four? <laughs> right. Fair enough. If you do, you're probably just going to be insane. Right. I just like feel like writer. Yeah. His drive is is his willingness to sacrifice himself. In the beginning, he's the first one that wants to go look for Will. He is the right. driving force behind finding Will, and he says, I'm the only one who cares about Will. And he does not care what kind of danger he puts himself in to get there. He sacrifices himself for Dustin at the rock quarry, even so what though Eleven in saves two, him. two, then? I think he didn't have anything to sacrifice for. There was nothing there. I mean, he's like, the DM, so really, if he gets in trouble, he's just going to throw a DNPC at, like, the problem. <laughs> All you Dungeons and Dragons nerds, right here. I have letters. <laughs> that was good. Uh, I mean, I don't. I just. I feel like I feel like Mike was definitely on a back burner this season. I do think that that this next season is going to obviously, since it's focusing more around L, it's going to focus more around Mike, and I think we can expect Mike to get his butt in some trouble. L is going to come save him. I think that's going to be mm. her driving force. He is going to be in some kind of problems. And I think she's going to do some possibly awful things to save Mike. She would do literally anything well, to save Mike. She can do anything, yeah. Like, yeah. people could very easily and die to save Mike. leave no fingerprints. Right. Yeah. I mean, think about all the people she killed in that hallway with the blood running down No, I know. Down their I, was face. There. I was there. All of it was for Mike. I watched it. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Are they playing D and D? Are they playing Dig Dug? I think in the beginning of season. The beginning two. of season two starts at the arcade. Is the arcade? They 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 later on reference do reference the mind they player do, yeah. when they pull out their monster manual, which I had that monster manual. I think it's not necessarily going to be D and D because it does seem like the first season was D and D, the second season moved to arcade because they're growing as characters. Maybe they have the. Curse and I think whatever the next thing is, it's going to be more teenage, a little bit. Yeah, Atari. Maybe something. they have the curse of Jumanji. <laughs> Jumanji is going to be. They're Jumanji. summoning. They're summoning things <laughs> as they play games. Well, I mean, Possibly. Atari's already happened at this point. Yeah. At this point, we would be getting pretty close to NES. It's been a year, la a year later. Oh, we got nine minutes. Okay, we only have two characters left anyway. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I mean, there's so definitely the plenty of monsters, like, that could be established. I'm sure, though, I'm sure it'll be completely, like, I'm sure the Mind Flayer will still show up and, like, but I'm sure there's a completely new one that'll show up. Because that thing's big. It, well, that's how we think of Cthulhu. Exactly. Yeah. Like, if, if that thing is Nyarlathotep, Nyarlathotep is the gatekeeper. So, 
it's trying to be there to let things through. So if we have smaller things that can come through, then, you know, obviously the Since dogs. the weekend. <laughs> okay. Uh, Hopper, uh, everybody's uh, favorite character. I'm Team Hopper. One punch share. I apologize for the uh, <laughs> cigarette, but it was like the best comparison that I could find was these characters. So I have the biggest crush on Hopper. I mean, ever. line up. Line so, him up. I'm going to drink just because I'm thinking inappropriately about him. Yeah. But I line him up. Come on. Oh, my gosh. He, like, first of all, his mission to Colcock, everybody in town. Is like the he's just like he's so John McLean and Riggs like he's just like this is the only way I know how to get answers. Bah. Like, yes. No Indiana Jones picture. I mean that. I I I was gonna put Indiana Jones out on there. I ran out of time. Technical difficulties. Do your makeup. Shut That's up. Uh, <laughs> she looks great. Though. I did throw this thing together this morning. Um, so. I, I feel like Hopper's character is the meatiest, and I don't mean that physically, I mean as far as character development goes. Uh, his history is heartbreaking, and it feeds his relationship with Elle in such a beautiful way, just so beautiful. And, and that scene after the psychic temper tantrum where where he's like, he wants to apologize for the fight, but like a good parent, he's like, so clean good. it up, yeah. I'll be home and maybe I'll fix your TV. Like, that's such a dad thing to do. So good. I'm pretty sure I heard there was him that wanted to stand in the room with the breaking glass whenever they did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah? So I think they were going to use a stunt double. I'm pretty sure it was him that was like, no, nah, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Oof. I mean, I'm just so excited. I'm excited to see what comes next for him. He's the character I want to follow the most. I just have no idea what he's going to do next. I mean, He's technically Elle's dad. Yeah. They got a lot of issues to deal with. Well, she's a teenager. Right. She is so. going into some crazy years. Like, if you think that psychic temper tantrum was bad, she hasn't even hit puberty She yet. literally raised the house. She, I don't even know what is going to happen in that town. <laughs> like, well, and see, Hopper's a person, I don't, maybe it's just me, again, maybe just me. I don't 100% trust him because I think there's... <laughs> <laughs> I think so, you're gonna. I think you're making Hopper angry. Hopper, you're drinking. <laughs> what is, what is this? Let me finish my sentence before you take me out. And, you know, flog you. Hang me up like a pinata. Uh, I because there are things he's not. T he's not telling us everything he knows. There's still things he knows about without. I mean, he did lie us. to Elle about her mom. He's lying to every. He's leaving things out. He's omitting a lot of things. That he knows. But not for like nefarious purposes. Yeah. Oh, I think he's to protect yeah. you. <laughs> I'm just not gonna tell you there's a secret lab behind these woods. Like, that doesn't I don't know. Like, I feel I feel like the deal that he made no, with the doctor was to protect the town. And I agree with that, you. That I think that it's comes to into protect. the whole point of like we have to then rely on his morality and his decision of what's important. And that will always end up with him making a decision that is too far the wrong way or too like I like I'm him. ready for him to do some bad stuff. Ooh. But. Yes sir. <laughs> Any of them? Any I you know yeah, who's your favorite? Any of them? He throw, if you guys watch our YouTube videos, he throws a lot of shade. He just likes to th stir the pot. It's just all of us yelling at that. <laughs> Call me the spoon. Because I stir the pot. I mean uh, I mean, I like all these characters, but I I do see their flaws. I do see like I'm not 100 percent like yeah, team. What? Because there are, like I said, there's, there's, there because they're so well written in the show. There are things that each character has a flaw that I, I pick at the scab. Okay, <laughs> that's that's, that's a what good I do. Yeah. Uh, yes, I agree. I think so. For, for most, most of us. us. For most of us. But if he wants to get us angry for YouTube views, he's going to say something. <laughs> you guys are still here. <laughs> okay, so Hopper's going to be awesome. Let's move on. Okay, star of the show. Uh, I feel like that was, those were pretty good representations. Uh, I think by far one of the most interesting and unresolved things that occurred this season was Elle's relationship with her mom. Her finding yeah. her mom and then being able to communicate with her in the in between. What I'm calling in the in between because it's not really the upside down. We gotta move. Four minutes. Uh, four minutes. Gosh. Okay. Um, we made mistakes. Anybody have big uh, L predictions? Yes. Okay. 
Oh, I, I read that oh, online. Yeah. I just, I, I had no idea cool. what it was, so I didn't want to pretend to like put it up there. Uh huh. Okay. And what happens to that girl? Uh, some bullies, some bullies kill like a dog in front of her, and she like tears them in half. Ooh. That seems appropriate, though. Woof. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ooh. I am ready to see the numbers. Gather how many the number. Are there? Yeah. Well, at I'm least gonna, eleven. There's, in, there's infinite possibility. But I don't know how many of them I died. Assume, yeah, I would assume at least the first few probably died in experimentation. Mm -hmm. And so, how long has this been going on? Goes. And are there people? Are there uh, some yeah. after them? They live in the upside down. Maybe they just get sucked into the upside Ooh. down, just like their score scores. And what is her relationship with the upside down? That's what interests me. Like, why did she open a gate to this place? I mean, there must be infinite dimensions out there. Like, why? Did, when she had that psychic like explosion. Do you have a thing explosion. up here talking about the upside down? Because what That's is the so upside down? Is it another universe that was like ours and is now dilapidated? Yeah, that's for a slide. Yeah, a slide. there we go. The upside down, that's what it is. So <laughs> a lot was of, it ours and then just died? A lot of people are expecting this like Planet of the Apes type situation okay. where you like, a lot of the internet is like, oh, well maybe, you know, the upside down is our world in the future or it's like, it's, you know, trying to make our world into itself. Yes. And that would make sense because the 80s, there was like the whole nuclear war zone is what hot, um, the, the cold, sorry, I don't know why I said hot. The cold war was going on, yeah. nuclear power was coming to the forefront of everybody's mind. So I like that sort of comparison where the mind flayer and how big it is and how like that fire, the first time the mind flayer is introduced, it's almost like a mushroom cloud. So I and do like that comparison. Also, just we haven't talked about it, but the sound in this season was un nerving like yeah. every time they showed that scene and i don't know what it was but i was just like i don't like it oh it yes me out. Oh, for the upside down i always imagine it as for some reminds me of mm, the grim dark future yeah thank god we got the nerd here <laughs> Huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's always a risk whenever you use your crazy magic powers. There's a chance that stuff's going to come back with it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I think it could be some things where like, it's like a parallel universe where they failed. And they lost the battle to the... That's universe, interesting. And now they're trying to go and take over all, all the universe. All the universe. Yes. And now this is their battle with the universe. Oh. So now we got Very some Legend of Zelda like oh, yeah, Hero of Light stuff where he fails yeah. to kill Ganon. Yes. Last one. yes, sir. Last, last one. one. Sorry. I do think it's I think it's interesting this whole like fungus concept that's been happening because it's bright it's very like uh, anybody who's seen Dreamcatcher or read Dreamcatcher it's got that like you know fungus is spreading and taking over uh, if you guys want to continue discussing stranger things please come by our booth we will we talk flyers. until we are booth blue in the face before you leave do not leave. Do not leave if raffle you filled out a raffle ticket. Cause do it, do it, go. Before I pull the raffle ticket, though, make sure to go to the app and rate us on the app. Yeah, Give if you us, had fun. Uh, three, to, three to five stars, please. Mm. And we are heading into our Back. American Horror now. Story panel. All right, the person I'm looking for is Fernando Saldawa. Fernando! Yeah. Good right. job, Fernando. Thanks, Thank everybody. Thank you for coming. Here is your raffle. Thank, Thank you. you guys so Thank much. We oh, gotta clear wait, out. Wait, wait, oh wait, wait, we gotta do our thing. Hurry up. We are the Knights of the Drunk Watch, and now our talk has ended. Jesus Christ. Bye guys. I Thanks. Read the outline. Thank you everybody. I did read the outline. Holy. I'm so sorry. Know about it. There's a nerdcore artist called Megaran. If you're familiar with him, he did an EP 
movie called Stranger. It's all about the second season of Stranger Things. Oh. And every song is a character. Oh, yeah. that's cool. amazing. Yeah, that's so, all, I'm going to have to check it out. What is it called? It's called Strangers by Mega Rand. Wow. And, uh, like, it's one of my favorite albums. The video that I found was really cool on IMDb. Um, it was literally 